welcome back to Mr. Gregoras Math. Today we're taking a look at using the quadratic formula to solve and check the solutions to a quadratic. So if you forget, the quadratic formula is x, or both x's rather, equals negative b plus or minus the square root of the discriminant b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's something that you should have memorized so that we can, I don't know, write it down on a piece of paper at the beginning of class sometimes when your math teacher remembers. Then we have to identify where these b's, a's, and c's come from. a is your coefficient of your x squared term. b is your coefficient of your x term. And c is the constant. That's why we call it c, because it's the constant. So we'll just go ahead and substitute into our values. So where I see this b, I'm going to substitute negative 14. Where I see this b, I'm going to substitute negative 14. You'll notice I'm always substituting my negatives in brackets so that that way I can remember what happens when I have two negatives going together with signs. Now I've minus 4 times a, which is 5, times c, which is negative 3. Really important to remember that sign because we want that to be a positive underneath the radical, otherwise it won't have roots. And then we'll have 2 times a, which is 2 times 5. So we'll go ahead and simplify this. I believe it's going to be 14 plus or minus the square root of 196. And then this looks to be 60 over 10. And we're going to end up just over here, adding our radical together. We'll have 14 plus or minus the square root of 256 over 10. Now 256 is 16 squared. So this is going to be 14 plus or minus 16 over 10. And now we have two values for x. So notice this was x on the left. I could have written x the entire way along. So the first time I go through, I'm going to write 14 plus 16 over 10. Or I'm going to write 14 minus 16 over 10. This is important. 14 plus 16 over 10 is 30 over 10 or 3. And 14 minus 16 over 10 is negative 2 over 10 or negative 1, 5. And so those are the two roots. We have a root at x equals 3, and we have a root at x equals negative 1 fifth. Because it worked out to nice, neat numbers, and in fact, because this number here worked out to be a perfect square, it's highly likely we could have solved this by factoring. If you go back and factor this original problem, it's going to factor nicely. Uh as 5x plus 1 and x minus 3, which gives us the same roots, x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 over 5. This is a good point to show that you can use the quadratic formula or you can use factoring. One takes a few steps and some calculations, the other takes some calculations and some know-how and skill, but they both get you to the same answer. This one, however, always works. This one only works if the solution factors nicely. So you do get a sense of when to use one technique or when to use another. Now, the last thing that I had to do was I had to solve, then check. So I'm going to go ahead and erase some of my work here. And we're going to set up and do an appropriate check. And we'll just do a check for, oh, uh, maybe we'll do both of our roots. Why not? Remember, when you see check, it's talking about left side, right side checks. So we'll start off by writing out the left side. That's the whole left side, which is 5 times x squared minus 14x minus 3. And we'll check our root of 3. So that means I'm going to replace x with 3. And i got to go do some math now. 3 squared is 9. 14 times 3 is negative 42. And 5 times 9 is 45. Minus 42 minus 3 is going to be equal to 0. Well, that's equal to the right-hand side, which is what I expected it to be equal to. So I want to be able to substitute in values and get to that spot. Now, if the right-hand side had something else there, I would separately do the right-hand side off to, the, off to the other side. But because I was able to construct it directly, I just leave this as checking the solution for 0. That's right, 3. Going and checking my solution for negative 1 fifth. A little bit trickier. I'm just going to replace, instead of x with 3, I'll replace it with negative 1 fifth. So this would be 5 times 1 over 25 minus 14 times negative 1 fifth, that's plus 14 over 5, minus 3, which is minus 15 over 5. I'm just leaving it with the common denominator so that the algebra is a little bit easier. Now, 5 times 1 over 25 is 1 over 5, plus 14 over 5, minus 15 over 5. 
And I think you can see one and 14 is 15 and 15 and 15 makes zero when you subtract them. And so this means that we're going to be going from our left side to our right side with both of these values and they're checked out correctly. So key items. We learned how to identify A, B, and C. We checked out how to use the quadratic formula to solve. We found out that when we have a nice square root, it likely means it would have factored in the first place. And we now know how to check with the left side, right side check. Don't forget to join us next time on Mr. Dororis Math to learn about how to classify when the roots are real, repeated, or imaginary. And if you are using your imagination, why don't you use your imagination and picture that notification bell up here. Don't forget to ring it. And do check the details in the comments below so that that way you can identify our new stuff we're trying to bring into our merch store every day. Take good care and we'll see you next time.